Hi, Coach. Hi. Okay. Um, blanket question first and foremost. Thoughts on this game compared but, well, thoughts on this game and getting a big time bounce back win after losing to Notre Dame this past weekend? Um, look, Notre Dame is really good. We were not good. So it was a combination of some, you know, just be, them being really good and us being really bad the other day. Um, for us offensively, I thought really, really solid half, um, you know, scoring 41 points. It's more than we had in four quarters at Notre Dame. So. Um, we just weren't solid defensively, uh, just not quite finishing plays in the first half and um, almost kind of felt like because we were scoring the ball, we, we were kind of playing like we were up 20 points or whatever, but um, our group responded in the third quarter and, and locked themselves in and, um, you know, up until the fourth quarter, I think we had nine turnovers going into the fourth quarter and finished that, that quarter with seven. So. Um, a, a decent job of taking care of the basketball today and getting shots up. Um, I think still, you know, Soph doesn't shoot a couple threes and steps out of bounds. So just that challenge to our group of like, when you get your open shots, shoot it. I think Mila did the same thing. We, you know, taking open shots um, and trusting, trusting yourself and trusting what we're trying to put you in. And um, if we can do that, we'll, we'll continue to get better on the offensive end and protect the basketball. How are you able to get over that second quarter slump coming into the third? Um, just our group responded. We challenged them at halftime um, on the defensive end. Uh, we changed a couple things on, on some ball screen coverage um, and our group locked in. But it was just pure challenge, pure effort, pure heart. There's no magic formula. It's how bad do you want it. And they came out and showed us that they wanted it. In the month of December, being undefeated so far in Mackey, what does that mean to you and your program? Uh, that we're taking care of business. Um, we've had good, really good crowds at home, and it's been fun to, to play in front of some 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 big crowds and hopefully that continues in Big Ten play but um, if you want to do anything in college basketball you got to protect your home court and hopefully in the second half of the season we can continue to do that We've got some really good teams coming in here but uh, you know it's our job to make sure nobody's coming out of here with a win yeah Wisconsin's up next not looking too far ahead but um, starting Big Ten play, what's going to be the message that you're going to give to your team? It's just every play. You know, every play matters. You can't take you can't take a possession off. Um, you know, I think that obviously that that shows being on the road at Minnesota. Um, we turned the ball over 19 times, gave up 14 offense rebounds, and lose by two. Um, so just the importance of every single play and how how each possession matters, um, and whether it's the the first minute or or the last minute. Um, you know, got to, it, it, it is a marathon. Like, you know, I remember my, you know, Coach Curry always saying it, it's, it's a marathon, not a sprint. And we've got 17 games left, and the next one's Wisconsin, and we, it's at home, and we've got to do our job of protecting home court. Was there anything different about Abby's energy at the start today? Um, no, I think Z actually mentioned to me right before tip that Abby had a little bit, little bit of juice going in her. Um, so... Uh, you know, what's what's really good is just the challenge of getting JT to get the ball out of her hands and up to, to, to Abby. Um, JT picks up a couple fouls, and what's Mad what Madison is really good at, about is, is seeing the floor and her getting able, her able to throw the ball up the court to, to Abby and just getting – I mean, she wasn't finishing plays, but she was getting to the free throw line and put some pressure on him. Uh, but I thought Abby and, and Madison just kind of – we're, we're really, really good in the open floor um, the whole game, but especially there in the first half. When you got the call or text last spring at Sophia Turner ACL, mm -hmm. kind of what what went through your mind? Because you, you had yeah, I mean you had big for all your freshmen, you had big plans. Yeah, but kind of walk, just walk us crushed through that for process. her. Um, you know, I think our first thought was, you know, crushed for her. Her senior year, she doesn't get to finish it out in a year when she's, you know, she's she was Illinois Miss Basketball her junior year, and then her not being able to finish her her senior year. So just making sure we were we were there for her. Um, and then when he kind of took a further step back, it's like, wow, is she redshirting? You know, is she not playing? You know, what what happens? Um, I think she had surgery in January or late January and February. So she's not even a full year. Um, and, and she's starting to get a little more and more confident out there, um, not quite thinking about it, getting her some more reps on the defensive end so she's better for our team and team defense. But I mean, you can see what she can do. She just moves differently than everybody on the court. She's she's locked and loaded, ready to shoot it whenever she catches it. She's got a great first step, strong body, um, and plays with a little bit of swag to her that she knows that she's she's that good offensively. So the more we can get her reps, um, the better she's going to be for our ball club.
was there a thought of redshirting her, or you could just kind of let that process? Yeah, play I think out? it just we just let it play out. Um, I I think you know. Her, you look at her legs, her leg, she's got such great sh leg strength and she was able to work really hard in rehab. Um, so she got it back very quickly. Um, we actually thought she, I mean, she was back on the court for us practicing early October. Um, you know, and obviously that's controlled stuff, but I mean, it took me, uh, nine months before I was there, uh, on, in controlled stuff. And, it's, it probably took me a year to, to mentally be okay. And I think that's a testament to just Sophie's strength, um, her physical strength, but her mindset of wanting to get back and, and make a difference for our ball club. And, and now just to have that that piece as you get back, back in the Big Ten, see another option coming yeah. off the bench, how important could that be for you? Just another offensive threat, right? Like it, it takes some pressure off of Madison and Abby to be perfect from the field every night. Um, you know, because she is a she's got she's somebody you have to respect because she shoots it at such a high clip. I mean, she's she comes on the floor. She's that's where her range is. Um, you, you know, a couple times. You know, today she she drives and makes a drop down pass to JT. I think she made the same play the other night against Notre Dame. The other afternoon against Notre Dame, um, she just got a feel for herself on the offensive end. I think she's starting to feel a little bit more Sophie like. Um, and if we can just keep continue to, to get that out of her, keep putting her in really good positions, letting the game slow down for her, and then figure out the defensive end where we can put her in until she gets really, really a lot, conf a lot of confidence on that end. Um, she, you know, we said it at the beginning of the year, we thought if she got healthy, she could be, you know, kind of the X factor for us in Big Ten play. All right, so if your team could open a Christmas present together and – you put that gift under the tree, what would be in the box or what would be the gift that you would want them to open when they come back and restart their season? Wow. Wow. Um, nothing physical right now. I think, I think the, the thing that, that I want them to, to open um, and have is to just to play with a pure love of the game of basketball and forget every outside factor you know, whether it's social media or your parents or your family or your friends in your head that, oh, you should be doing this, you should be doing that, oh, you should, you know, this should happen, this should happen, but just a pure love and, and play for the game that you've been playing your whole life. Like, we're, we get a, this is college basketball, yeah, but we, like, this is a game that we should love and just go out there and have a, a hell of a lot of fun doing it. Um, so when we come back on the night, night of the 26th, I hope the next three months for us is the present that we open is just finding that, that pure love for the game that we go out there and just play like we're little girls falling in love with it for the very first time. Coach, you mentioned uh, at, at Notre Dame and something that you did tonight was, you know, taking, not, not giving up good shots and it really seemed like that happened. I mean, 50% from three. Um, what does that look like, though, just from, from a coaching perspective, you know, taking, taking a good shot without maybe overpassing and leading to the turnovers that happen against Notre Dame? Yeah, I think you watch. Um, <clears throat> when you watch us play, I think we run really good actions and we get our kids open. Um, like the first play of the game, the jump ball, like we, we, we run something, Abby back cuts, Mads gets it, passes kind of at her ankles, but she catches and shoots it. You know, that's the shot that she passed up at Notre Dame. Um, she shoots it. And, and whether you make it or miss, you you know, like Mary Ashley's going to crash. Caitlin's going to crash. JT's going to crash. Trust that everybody else is going to do their job. When we're, when we're working to get a shot, you take your shot. Um, you know, I think I mentioned it. Soph steps out of bounds twice on, on shot fakes because she doesn't shoot it. Mila comes off a pin down. Uh, turns it over because she doesn't shoot her shot. You know, just trusting that we're putting you in these positions just to do your job. You know, who cares if you make it or if you miss it? Uh, do your job. Uh, and, you know, I think the more we can show that to them on tape, the more they're kind of realizing and see that. Like, if we can, if we can just take our open shots, we've got some really, good, we've got some kids who can score the basketball in our ball club and just not overthink, not overpass, just play basketball, take your first open shot. Coach. Um the moment, I think, for me, I mean, um, 4.30 in, in the third quarter, Sophie comes up in transition, pops a three, drains it. Indiana State calls, calls a timeout, and you just got this, this look in, in your eye, you know, going into that timeout. Was that kind of like a, a, a kind of a light bulb moment for, for your team, you think, in, 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 in that sense? really seemed like there was a lot of energy and passion for you off, off that. I think everybody knows what Sophie can give us. And I think just her having the confidence to, to pull in transition and knock it down, it was just like, a, OK, that's kind of what we're missing here. 
um, and she just gives us a different dynamic. So, um, yeah, I mean, just the electricity that that's scoring the basketball. You know, I think, and there was another play. The ball moved, pop, pop. Abby gets a three in the corner. Same thing in the third quarter. Um, when that can happen for us, um, we're going to shoot it at a high percentage from the three-point line because we've got some really good players on our team. Coach, watching Sophie come come into your team, um, seeing her go through the process, what's something that you know you can share with us day to day, the kind of recovery that she went through and how she was able to expedite the process to come back onto the court as quickly as she could now contribute the way she did tonight? I think the the biggest challenge for her has been mentally, you know, staying patient when you th even when you know that you know like the doctor is telling you you're not like you're not ready but you feel that you are um you've got to let it heal um but she did she she grinded you know two times a day on her own obviously it was in the spring in the summer um and in the fall but getting in getting rehab in um you know just building your leg strength up but her battle of you know trying you know the, the conversations we've had is i just don't feel like i'm playing like myself i don't feel like so the mental battle that she's had to go through until she's in, you know i don't think she's quite there i don't think that she feels like sophie swanson yet uh, but days like they today are really good and we can just keep stacking practice days um you guys are gonna a lot of, uh, like what you see out of number 31. last question for me you know lost like to notre dame with, can can drag down a team and yet this team's showing a lot of resiliency you know bouncing back from losses how impressive for you was it to, you know, see the kind of energy tonight, you know, knowing that three three days ago it was uh, it was what wasn't the result that you wanted? We got a lot of fighters on our team. Um, these kids aren't going to quit. They're not going to back down. It's just a matter of playing with the the, the love and passion. Um, you know, Monday I was in any kind of mood to practice. My staff lifted me up. The players responded. Yesterday we came in had a good had a good prep day, and I thought. You know, we came in. We weren't solid defensively in the first half, but but scored the basketball in the second half. I thought we got better defensively. What are your thoughts on uh, early games with the field trip with the grade school? Yeah, it's kids? awesome. It's fun. Uh, you know, I, I, I don't know what does that say. Seven thousand. It was the number today, but it gets it gets loud, um, and and you just see their energy and. Um, man, anytime I could have gotten out of school to, to go to a, a college basketball game, I would have loved that field trip. So um, it, it was early, you know, alarm clock going off early this morning. Uh, but our kid, our kids, you know, we got up, watched film, ate breakfast, um, and, and found a way to get a win. And what has Tim Newton meant to you oh, as wow. a coach and as a player? He's in here, guys. Um, and uh, <laughs> I think it's everything you I've said to you, Tim. Um, you know, for me as a player, um, you know, just, he always had your back, right? Like you talk to him post game or or before the game. You know, he's always had something to to lift your spirits. You know, especially after tough games. You always and and now seeing it from a coach's standpoint, um, right? There's there's been some tough moments for our ball club, but he's always got the right words to say to you to kind of lift your spirits, um, to kind of keep you focused on what's ahead and and not not in the moment. Um, you know, he makes interviews really, really easy after tough days. Um, and but but it's his it's his passion and his love uh, for our game. I think the what it, what I'll remember from this season when we had the '99 team in. Tim gave a toast um, to that team, and he got he got choked up um, talking to him, and he talked about the relationship that he had with that team um, and how you know, intimate it was across because they were so close. But, like, that's who Tim is. Like, you just want him around all the time. His, um, his like, zest for life and his knowledge of the game of basketball and pure love for Purdue is really unmatched. Um, he, I sent him a text this morning, and, and he responded. And, um, you know, his response was, you know, like, you know, like where we're we're going with the program, um, and I hope Tim stays around for a long time, um, and we can win a lot more championships together. And what about your decision to give him a game ball? Um, well, I mean, he absolutely deserves it. Um, it's 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 the least we could do. I I can't wait till January second, and we can honor him even more. Um, One thousand games with our program is is incredible. I. It, it really leaves me speechless. I think we were talking about the other day, January 3rd, 1991 was his very first game. And here we are, December 20th, 2023, and he's still moving. So hopefully he's got a lot more in him for us. 
um, and we find a way to win some championships for him. All right, thanks, y'all. Happy holidays. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, Coach.